Have you ever wondered how NeoPixels or individually addressable Christmas lights work? Well, today we're going to find out with a pig scope and a computer. So how do they work then? Well, let me tell you. Each of these lights doesn't actually have an individual address. Instead, you talk to one and then it takes a bit of data and sends it to the next one. Sort of like some sort of daisy chaining. It's essentially like if you had a packet of crisps, you take one, Red. give it to your mate, and then he keeps going down the line until you get Green. to the very end. So how do we see that on an oscilloscope? Well, let's dive in. The equipment we're using today is we've got a Plasma 2040, which is essentially an LED driver for the NeoPixels. And then we've got a series of NeoPixels or WS2811Bs. We're looking at the signal on the start and at the end of the signal, so you can see how it changes throughout each individual LED. If we take our oscilloscope and we've got our 3000E here and we put it onto the input, then we should see all of our LEDs. Hold that thought. Okay. Right. What are you doing now? I need a screwdriver. Say something rude about Ben. Uh, with hair in it. Thank you. Here we're looking at the output of the Plasma 2040 and you can see all of the LEDs that it's going to reach, which in this line is about 50 LEDs. So if we zoom into that, you can see that we have many, many signals. So if you have a look at the specification for these WS2811s and 12s, you'll see that there is a pulse width modulation sequence for a one or a zero, and it has eight bits per R, G, and B. What the plasma will do, will send 24 bits, which is your R, G, and B, eight bits, through the whole signal, and each LED will pick that signal, take it, take its bit off, and replicate the signal for the next LED. So what does it look like when it gets to the end? We can have a look at that because I've soldered this terrible piece of uh, strip board to the last LED. And what we'll see is 24 bits, which is our R, G and B values for the last LED. So you can see how our large signal transfers all the way to the end of our 50 LEDs to a small signal of just 24 bits. Now, to read the signal is a little bit different. So what we can do is change all the colors to one single color, and then it should be incredibly obvious how the eight bits work. So now all the LEDs are green, which means the last one is also green. On Pegascope 7, we can see we have R, G, and B values, but for all the G values or the green values, they all have a longer pulse width than the R and B values, which means it's gonna be all green. So if we count that out, it'll be eight bits of ones and it'll be 255. And then what you can do in Picoscope 7 is use our deep measure feature and essentially measure each of the PWM and check that the high pulse width and the low pulse width are within the specification. We can export that data into an Excel spreadsheet and then what we can do is concatenate that data and turn it into a decimal value to work out if it's actually green, which I think in this case it is. So that's how your smart LEDs work. So next time you're doing the tree, just think about all those little bits going across the whole daisy chain. 